Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you how to make um, a basic poster today. So we're going to cover various tools such as how to put in a background, how to use a text tool, how to cut images out using various selection tools, and how to make a board out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make an A3 poster. So once we've opened up Photoshop, we can go File, New, and um, it takes us to this page. Now, you may not see A3. So if you can't see A3, simply go to print because A3 is a print media, it's paper. If you still can't see it, or I can't see it, go to view all presets and then you'll be able to find it that way. So click on A3, create a title and you can call it poster uh, experiment because this is just an experiment for you and it's going to go into your um, folio into your folder your google folder called testing and experiments testing and experimentation okay uh, and then we click create so there's our blank page that we're going to make our poster on i'm just going to quickly show you how to make a plain poster first so a plain background uh, so what we would do is, firstly, we need to make sure we have everything we need to make this poster today. So we're going to go to window. We're going to make sure that history and layers are checked, but also tools. Okay, so make sure you've got your tools, your layers and your history. Okay, so you can see here I've got my layers. This is my layer palette. This is my history palette. So if I make mistakes, I can just go back. Oops. And these are my tools in case they're not there. Usually they are there, but in case they, for some reason or other, they've disappeared. First thing I'm going to do is just show you how to put a plain background in. So what I'm going to do here is show you, these are called, this is your swatch palette. So if I double click on it, I can go on to any color I like. So um, I think I'll go on to, no, I think I'll go on to yellow. Okay, so I can scroll this up and down and I can move this around. So I'll, I'll, let's just say yellow. And then I'm going to go edit fill and I'm going to select the foreground color, which is this, this is in the foreground. I could also put a background color, which is this brown one. Okay, I can also put patterns, but I'm just going to go foreground and I'm going to click OK. Okay, there's my foreground. That's Now I've filled up my poster with a, a nice plain background. Um, if I wanted to put a gradient on this, I could just simply go to this tool here. It's called the gradient tool. Okay, we click on it and it, when you sort of hover over it, it gives you instructions and tells you what it is creates a gradual blend between two colors. So I'm going to click on that. And the two colors are this color and that color, because that they're the colors I have. You can change those, of course. And it gives you these little cross hairs. You can see them, can you see that? Very tiny. And you just simply draw a line in the direction of the gradient that you want. And there's your gradient, okay? So that's how you do a gradient. Now. I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to use an image. Okay, so I'm going to go back in my, oops, go back here. I'm going to go back in history. So this is my history palette here. I'm going to go back to where I had new. And I'm going to, um, what did you do that for? Okay, I am going to uh, insert um, an image that I've downloaded already. Um, from uh, a Google Drive that I will then give you access to. So I'm going to go um, File, Open, and this is the image. Okay, so this is the image that I want. It's called, that's not it, Coffee Beans. Okay, coffee beans. I'm going to make this my background image. Oops. Actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to. I'm 
Oops. Go back to poster experiment. I'm going to do that differently. Rather than just open it separately, I'm going to Sorry, that's where I want it. I'm going to go back to, oops, I'm going to place the image on the um, white background. So there's two ways of working. You can open it up separately and edit it and then paste it on, or you can just paste it on. I'm going to just place it on, paste it on. So I go to file, place embedded, and then I find it and it's called coffee beans. That's what I want to do. So that's now just placed it straight onto my A3 image. Now, when I place it, it gives me this bounding box with these little square dots. This allows me to stretch it out, okay, and move it as well, all right? There is a move tool here if you need to move it later on, okay? Now, I'm just going to cl click enter and show you how to get that bounding box back again because um, I can still move it because I've got the move tool but I can't sort of edit it. So what I'm going to do is just show tell you how to get back to it. I'll just go into another tool. No, it's just doing it anyway. If you lose that bounding box and all you need to do is use the shortcut command T for transform. So click on the coffee bean layer, command T and it will let you then stretch it out just in case you lose it and you'll notice that it looks quite pixelated to start off with but when I press enter it's fine okay so there's my coffee bean background the next thing I'm going to do is place I want to place another image okay um, but the problem is I need to cut around this image so I'm going to now open an image and before I place it I'm just going to open it and edit it so I go file open and I'm going to place this eventually I'm going to put this coffee cup on so I'm just going to open it separately now you see every time I open something up it appears up here so I've got all these different tabs that I can go back to all right so they're all still there now I'm going to show you various ways of removing this background. The first thing I need to do is in order to have this transparent, I'm going to have to unlock this. So I just click it and it's now unlocked. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is show you various selection tools. So I'm going to show you the magnetic lasso, the magic wand, and also there's something called the quick selection tool, which is really handy. Okay, and also the eraser. <clears throat> so there's four tools I'm going to show you um, that you can use to remove a background. I'll start off with the simple one. And that is, actually, I'll start off with the magnetic lasso. There's different lassos. I like the magnetic lasso because it sticks to edges. It knows what edges, if it can see an edge, it will stick to it. So I just click and I drag the tool around and sometimes I have to help it along. Um, say, actually, I might start it here because this is the area that I need to help it along. I'll show you that. So I'm going to go here. You can see the edges, but all of a sudden, it can't see the edge because the tone of the cup is really dark. So this is where I have to actually click it. So I have to actually help it along and then the rest it will do by itself. I'm gonna cut the steam off as well. I'm not gonna do the whole image with the magnetic lasso because I actually wanna show you other tools as well. Just gonna show you that. Then I, the, the, the first dot and the last dot have to meet before it becomes a selection. And there you have, when, you, when it becomes a selection, you know because you have these little dots that are called marching ants. And that means you've got something selected. You can see I didn't do a very good job here. So all I have to do is go to up my options up here and I can actually add to that selection. So I can, um, I can go like that. Oops, I might have to click it. 
not doing a very good job there, but it's kind of added to my selection. You can also subtract as well. Anyway, once I've got that selected, I press delete. Okay, and now this checkered background that you see means that it is transparent. Now, how do we get rid of those marching ants? A shortcut, Command D, Command D for deselect. I'm going to show you another tool. It's called the magic wand. So if you have a plain background that is one colour, this is great because it just eliminates um, everything straight away. I'm just going to select this area here. Can you see how it was all black and it just selected it immediately? Okay, so that's the magic wand. It probably selected a bit too much. Command D to get rid of it. So it doesn't matter. I'll just leave it. Uh, the next tool I'm going to show you is behind the magic wand and it's called the quick selection. Um, before I move on, if you can't find these tools, I will put up a video to show you how to find them on Photoshop because you've got all your tools, but your toolbar is quite limited and it doesn't have everything, but I'll show you how to do that on another video. Now, this is my quick selection. Notice it's only little. It's a little sort of round sort of brush. What I'm going to do is show you how to enlarge it. Now, underneath the delete button on your keyboard are curly brackets, okay? This, the left one, the left curly bracket or brace makes your brush small. The right one makes it big, okay? I like to use these shortcuts, okay? There you go. And I like the quick selection tool. You'll probably like it too, because it, it's quite intuitive. And look at that, it just deletes things quite easily. Okay, Command D to get rid of it. I might just do a bit more here delete. And um, I'm just going to leave a tiny bit for the eraser. Okay, command D. Okay, actually, I'll just do the, the rest with the eraser tool. So I've shown you magnetic lasso, quick selection tool, um, magic wand, and I'm going to just show you the eraser, which is here. So when we pick the eraser, you can also pick the brush type. I want a nice, you can have a nice hard sharp brush, which makes really sharp. Oh, you're not erasing, are you? Doing something wrong there. That. Okay, just make sure you're using an eraser tool. There we go. Sometimes, yeah. You're not going to work. Okay, that is the eraser tool and I can't work out why it's not working. It will probably work for you. It's not working for me today. And if any of you work it out, let me know. Okay, I'm going to go back to my good old quick selection tool and get rid of the rest of that. Oh, actually, you know why? Because I've got, I forgot to click control, command D. Okay, so I had something selected, it was tiny, there you go. That's the eraser brush, it's quite hard. If I go for a soft one, I can just drag that down and make a fuzzy brush. I can also enlarge the brush as well. There you go, that's what happens when you don't de deselect. Can you see how that's quite fuzzy? So there are times when you wanna do some really gentle selections. Uh, gentle erasing. You can also erase lightly like you do with the real eraser. You can, you know how you can press hard and soft. You can actually do that with, by changing the flow and the opacity and make it sort of, I'll just do that. See how that sort of just rubs it out lightly. I'll go back in history. So I don't like that. Actually, I'm going to use um, a full eraser and I'm just going to get rid of just some bits that I don't like. And I'll leave that shadow there. Okay, so there you go. I've gotten rid of the background and I've shown you different techniques of getting rid of a background. You only need to use one or possibly two of those selection techniques, but I've shown them all to you um, just in case. Now, I'm going to select this cup and put it on my poster. So shortcut, Command A for select all. You can see the marching ants. 
Command C for copy. And then I'm going to go back to my poster and I'm going to click Command V. Ah, <laughs> I've selected the wrong thing. So you can see that. I don't know why that happened. Delete. Go back to my cup, which is here. Command C, oh, click on, yeah, make sure you've clicked on the layer. I didn't click on it. So make sure you clicked on the layer you want to select. Command A, Command C. It's probably good that I'm making these little errors because that way you can, if you make the error, you can, you know what to do. Command V, there's my coffee cup, very small. I've got the bounding box. I'm just going to enlarge it. Okay. And notice that when I drag it around, the little uh, um, guidelines come up. They're really handy. If I want it in the middle, which I don't, there you've got the guidelines. I actually want it, I want it center, but not right in the middle. So I'm just going to put it there. Okay. So there we go. There's our coffee cup. I'm going to add a text box now. And I am going to call it all about the coffee. That's my tagline, all about the coffee. And I'm going to show you how I, how I got that arc as well. So um, my text tool is here. When I click on it, notice that all these options change. I've already selected, I'm going to do Bodoni 72 small caps, but you have so many fonts to choose from. Um, you can even download fonts from Urban Font, but we won't do that today. Um, for now, I'm just going to make it 72 points in size, and that's really all I need to show you for now. So I'm going to click somewhere, and I'm just going to type in all. Does anyone know why you can't see that? Because it's the colour. Change your colour. Um, actually, I'm going to show you how to use the eyedropper. That's the eyedropper. I'm going to select a colour from my poster because I want um, I want repetition. So this is the eyedropper, and it samples colours. So I drop on. I go on. To, I use the eyedropper. Go onto the coffee bean layer because I'm telling it to sample. A, actually, no. I'm going to sample the cup, which is this one here. That's the cup layer, okay? I'm going to sample, I like this colour here. There we go. Actually, it might go a bit lighter. Okay, so that's the colour I want. Um, I'm going to start again. I'm going to drag that into the bin and do another text layer. Okay, so I'm going to click on T, right? I'm going to click on my poster. About. I'm going to click enter. Actually, it's still. That happens to you. It's still in brown. Ah, oh, that's why. <laughs> okay. I can highlight that text. I actually should have changed the color up here. My mistake. I can highlight that and just change it back to that. Okay. All about the coffee. Um, I'm going to just do a little bit of, just go back to the text tool. All of, I want coffee on its own line. Um, that's already center aligned, but if I highlight it with my cursor, I can make it left aligned, or oh, that's right aligned, left aligned or center aligned. I don't like the size. So up here, I'm just going to type in 100 because when you scroll down, it only goes to 72, but you can type in whatever number you like. Actually, I'm going to make it 150. Okay. So um, all about the coffee. I made coffee the biggest. I made that all caps. Bodoni is all caps anyway, but these are all caps. I don't like the being big. I'm going to make that small. So I highlight that because it's not an important word and I've made it smaller. Okay, so all about the coffee. 
Now, how do I create that sort of arc that you see in this coffee poster? It's a bit rounded. It's a bit more interesting. I'm going to show you how to do that. You don't have to do that, but it's just another technique. I go back to the text tool and over up here, it gives me all these options, including color, which I forgot about there, but there's your arc tool. So when I click on that, I can go none or I can do all these various types of arcs. I'm gonna do this arc. I think it's a nice subtle one. It looks simple, okay? Um, and I can drag that around and I'm actually gonna just make it from memory, I had it eight and it looked okay. I don't want it over the top. I want people to be able to read my poster. Okay, so I've just picked eight. I'm not gonna fiddle with these. These don't really do anything that's useful for a poster, but you can try them out. So um, there we go. One more thing I'm gonna show you is, a, oh, I'm gonna align everything because although it looks aligned, I don't think it is. So. Uh, there's my, I'm going to move this layer, which is all about the coffee layer. So I make sure I've got that highlighted. This is a move tool, guys. And I'm just going to, there we go. That's better. I know it's only subtle, but it's, I know it's center now. Let's go back to the mug or the coffee cup layer, which is here. Just going to make sure that's center. Okay. Oh, I forgot to include the fine print. Okay, I'm going to put some fine print on this as well. Okay, so I'm going, because it's going to be a different size, I'm going to do a new text layer. So I go back to T and I'm just going to draw a box. Um, I'm going to line it up with the C. Oops. Click on T. I want to draw a new text box, line it up like that. Okay. Um, I'm not going to, what I'm going to do is just use what we call mock text or um, lorem ipsum, which is, I'll show you the website. It's just, and there's lots of them. Um, you don't need this because you're going to create real text. But if you want dummy text, just to make a mock up, you know, this is a lorem ipsum dummy text generator it just generates random non-meaningful words I'm just going to copy that and i'm going to put that um, in my text box because i can't be bothered writing anything um okay i hope this works okay very small it's only 2.8 so i'm going to highlight that Ah, I made it very fiddly for myself. I'm going to go back in history. Do that again. Things don't always work out the way you want them. I should have had the dummy text ready to go. I'm just going to make sure it's bigger this time. I'm going to make it 14. There we go. It's, it's typed it in. Um, I'm going to put in a few, put it in twice. Um, because it's, um, it's information, a lot of information, I would never use Bodoni text. I would never use a fancy text for that because that is really, really hard to read, okay? Let's make it white. You can see that's really difficult. So this is where I would change the text. So I'm going to highlight wow. that. Yes. Yeah. Question. You're not on a Photoshop. Oh, okay. thank you. Ah, there we go. Thank you for that, William. There we go. I've inserted the text. Oh, that's all I did. I, I just copied and pasted random text in. Thanks for that. I do that sometimes. Uh, I'm going to highlight that. I'm just showing you how this text looks really difficult to read. It's okay as a heading. Whoops, I'm on the wrong layer. Go to this layer. It's okay if it's a, a heading. This happens sometimes. I might just trick it. There we go. Because it's so small, it's quite fiddly. Um, 
I'm just going to change this to a serif, a sans serif font. I've made it really hard for myself by making it so tiny. Anyway, so I'm going to highlight, I wonder if I can just do this. T. Oh, there we go. That's all I had to do. It was already selected. So I've made it a sans serif, which means without little tails, it's easier to read. I'll put that back. Um, I've center aligned all that. It can be fiddly. Um, and I'm just going to align, center align that text box and make proximity, make it closer to the heading. Okay. All right. I think that's right. Okay, uh, last thing I'm going to show you is a border. Now, obviously, you're going to have more time to do this than, than a period. So I'm going to give you maybe a period and a half to two periods and a half. So we'll see. Okay, I'm going to put a border around it because I think it just brings everything together and makes it easy to look at. So a bit like this one. So that's the last thing. Okay, um, over here we have a rectangular marquee tool. So it basically makes a nice rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle around the edge of my page. I want it to be, this is the way you get accuracy. See how I've got the pink, how it's highlighted, it's saying that it's, it's all evenly selected. Okay, then I'm going to go to select. I'm going to modify that. I'm going to make a border. So select modify border. And this is where you've got to put it, do a bit of guessing. I put in 100 pixels and that seemed to make a good size border. So 100 pixels could be 200. And there you go. Can you see that it's indented? I've got a selection now. And now I'm going to fill that selection with a fill layer. Um, I'm going to use this color because this is the color that I used already um, on the font and I want to create repetition. So I go edit. Oh, it's not selected today. Let's do that again. Hmm, today it doesn't want to feel. Okay, let's see. Oh, I know. Uh, put it on its own layer first. Put it on its own layer. <clears throat> I'm putting it on this blank layer. Edit, fill. Okay, and it's saying, well, what do you want me to fill it with? I want to fill it with the foreground colour. I want this colour. So I click foreground colour and I click OK, and there we go. Get rid of those marching ants, Command D. Okay, so that's basically the poster. And I've shown you some different techniques today. I've shown you how to put in different backgrounds. I've shown you how to cut out images. I've shown you how to put text in. I've shown you how to change the font of the text, the size of the text, how to create an arc, um, how to create a border. I'm gonna show you one, one more little trick, okay? Uh, I'm missing the steam from the, co the coffee cup. I want that. I'm going to show you one more technique and it's called blend mode. And it's a really useful technique if you know how to use it. So I'm going to go back to my coffee cup and um, I've deleted everything, including the background. Miss, do we need to put a border? No, no. I'm showing you everything that you could possibly use. You don't right. have to use any of these, you can use some okay, of them. Thank you. Okay, that's okay. I'm gonna go back to the original coffee cup. See my history? This is where history comes in handy. I'm gonna go back to the original. I want that steam, okay? I like it. And what's really good is that the steam is against a black background. And I'll show you why that's really useful when you're putting things in like, if you want coffee, a steam or smoke, if you've got a black background, it you can do it. So. This here is a is a um, it's a mark it's a selection tool, and I'm just going to use that because it's a neat rectangular selection tool. It gives me marching ants, so I'm just going to click on that, 
right? And I'm going to go Command A to cop. Oh, sorry, go back. Wrong. I'm going to go Command C to copy it. And then I'm going to go back to my poster and I'm going to put it um, on a new layer. And I'm going to click Command V. And there's the coffee. There's a, there's a smoke. It's very small. Command T to transform. So I'm going to make it bigger. Now you're thinking, I'll just match it up a bit. So I'll put it about there. That should do. Click enter. Why is black good? Well, this is where blending modes come in handy. It's a little trick and it's, um, it's very, very useful. If we go to the layers palette, you can see everything's on a different layer, including the smoke. So, you know, there's a smoke. We click on the smoke and over here it says normal. So basically it's been put on in a normal way, just stuck on top. I can change that. So I can go through all these different blend modes. Now it's this, it's these ones that are the, the ones that I'm looking for. Anything with a black background, you use these blend modes here. So lighten, you've got screen, color dodge, linear dodge, lighter color. I'm just going to use lighter color. It's very, very subtle. You can use any of those though. And you can see that it removes everything that's black. You know, depending on the background, you've got all these other ones as well, or the effect that you want. I'm just going to choose lighter color. And that's it. I've got the steam. I've still got the smoke, the steam, got the coffee cup. Okay, now to save it. We always, always, always save it twice. We save it as a Photoshop file. File, save as, um, so we're going to save it on our computer. I'm going to put it in my coffee poster folder. Um, Photoshop, why? Because tomorrow you might think, I don't like what I did there. I don't like the font. If you open, if you open it up again as a Photoshop file, you're going to get all these layers there ready for you to edit. Okay. So we click save. Okay. We also need to save it as a JPEG. JPEGs are just very simple compressed files that um, you can put into your Google folder, you can insert them into a Google slide, you can put them in a Word doc, you can upload them onto the internet. They are really, really versatile. Pretty much all the photos on your camera are JPEGs or similar or HEICs if you've got an iPhone, but basically JPEG is universal. So we go file, we save as again, we save it on your, on your computer because it's easier to find. And what we do is we scroll down where it says Photoshop, we scroll down and we go JPEG. Okay, and that's it. And then you click save. So you've got two versions of it. One that you can share with me, that's the JPEG and the Photoshop file, which, which lets you go back in history and um, change things. Okay, so I'm going to stop. Uh, that's pretty much all. I'm going to stop this now. And um, yeah, there's a lot there, but don't forget you can pause and do things at your own pace. So thanks, guys.